Hello, Teacher Guide, and welcome to Classroom Quest K-12. I'm your host, Stephanie Seagroves, and I'm so happy you've decided to join me on this epic teaching quest. It's no secret that students have changed, and student disengagement is a challenge that many teachers face. Here at Classroom Quest K-12, we use video game rules to both engage students and elevate academic expectations. Here at Classroom Quest K-12, the teacher is the guide and the student is the hero of the educational journey. So join me as we explore how to use the mastery gamification teaching methodology in our classrooms to help students succeed using mastery gamification rules that they naturally understand. If you believe like I do, that with enough time, effort, and support, any student can learn anything, you're in the right place. So let's jump right in. Hey, teacher friend. I'm glad you're here. Welcome to Classroom Quest K-12 this week. So I've been thinking a little bit about differentiation lately. Yeah. I used to groan when I heard the word. Oh my goodness. So I don't know about you, but when I was a new teacher, one of the biggest mysteries of teaching was how to do differentiation well. I was told that I should differentiate and each student should have a personalized learning curriculum. I was told that it was best practice to differentiate. And I was also told that all students have different learning styles and different paces at which they learn. I agreed with all of this. Data is solid, is good, yes, agreed, check. Just one problem. I had no idea what I was doing, <laughs> right? Anyone else feel that way? Oh my goodness. So. Let's see, imagine for a moment that you're put in charge of an assessment. Let's say you're told that you need to create an assessment that will test students' mobility. Sounds good. So you decide that the assessment should be climbing a tree. The higher the student gets in the tree, the better their mobility and the better their grade. Sounds reasonable. However, you get to class and you realize that your students are a fish, a cat, and a squirrel. But the test is the test, so you tell your students to climb the tree and whoever gets the highest will get the best grade. Likely what will happen is that the squirrel will be able to climb the highest. The cat will be able to climb the second highest but might get stuck somewhere in the middle. And the fish won't even be able to start. So you give the grades for mobility. Squirrel gets an A, the cat gets a C, and the fish gets an F. But is this actually a true test of mobility for these students? The teacher has labeled the fish a failure in mobility. But what if the test had been underwater? I think then the fish would have gotten an A and the cat would have gotten an F. As you might imagine, these animals represent our students' different strengths, abilities, and limitations. As teachers, we know that our students are different. Brains are different, experiences are different, students have different strengths. So it's extremely logical that they would learn at different paces and have different learning styles and different needs. Yet class sizes are at all time highs and teachers will routinely have upwards of 30 students. Even if you work at a small school, each class will usually have at least 15 students at a small school. So if secondary teachers have a standard 50 minute class, then that teacher will have between one and a half and three minutes with each student. Elementary teachers generally have shorter times for their subjects, for each subject, and a standard subject time could be around 30 minutes. So that just leaves one to two minutes per student. And that isn't even counting time for group instruction. So how are we supposed to develop a personalized learning curriculum for these students in one to three minutes per student. When I was studying to be a teacher, I had a professor that told my class that every student should have their own personalized learning curriculum. And as a pre-teaching student, I agreed, it made sense. This is what students need. But how in the world could teachers differentiate for each student in such a short amount of time per student? So, typically, if you talk to teachers, they will say that they deal with this difference in abilities by teaching to the middle of the group's ability. So they'll have some kids who are more advanced and 
the pace the teacher is going is a little bit slow for them, right? And then there's the kids that are a little bit behind the teacher's pace, and that's not going great for them. Of course, there's those students in the middle who this works great for. I mean, the teacher's teaching them. That's that's pretty great. But then those kids that are a little bit faster at learning, well, sometimes they start to get bored and they lose interest in school or at least in your subject or they start making trouble. I mean, you know them. And then even worse, the students who are slower than the teacher's pace, they start getting Fs, they start falling behind, they can't catch up, and they start to develop this identity as being a failure. And there's only so many times you can be labeled a failure before you start to believe it. Yet this is the most common approach due to time and resource restrictions in schools. It's not what teachers want to do, but it's what we feel like we have to do a lot of times. A different method that some teachers use to differentiate is ability groupings. So this is generally where the teacher will test the students to see their individual academic level in a certain subject and then place the students in groups according to their ability. Then in that setting, students will receive work that caters to their level and encourages them to improve at their level. We often see teachers doing this for reading in elementary, probably the most common, or math groups. My son does rocket math at his school, and it's all by ability. But while this is a very good attempt at differentiation and does get good results, good job teachers, hey, if you're doing this, I applaud this. This is awesome. There are some limitations to this. First of all, it's quite a lot of work for the teacher to have all this stuff for different groups. And yet we have many teachers willing to put in that work because they know that kids need stuff that matches their abilities. However, the other limitation is that often once students get put in the low group, it's unlikely that they will ever be able to move up to the middle or advanced group because as the low group is learning and progressing, so are the middle and the advanced groups. In fact, the middle and advanced groups are often progressing faster than the low group. So despite working hard and advancing and understanding and ability, it's rare for a student put in the low group to be able to move up to a more challenging level. And they are at risk of creating an identity of being slow or always being in the low group. And once a student creates an identity like that, it's very difficult to unlearn it. So how in the world are teachers supposed to meet all our students' needs in their varying abilities? Is having a personalized learning curriculum for each student just a pipe dream? So after a lot of frustration, I found mastery gamification. This is the only system that I've ever found that allows for the differentiation that students need. Mastery gamification is unique in the fact that students will naturally sort themselves into groups and student groups are mobile. So when a student is ready to move up to the next level, they easily can. No one gets stuck in a specific group and the teacher doesn't have to test students to see which group they'll go in. Curious about how this works? Keep listening, teacher guide. So at the beginning of a mastery gamified year, Students will begin in the same group, the whole class, one group, and they will all be in the lowest group because they haven't learned anything yet. The teacher will teach material, you know, our curriculum, what we're supposed to teach, go us, woohoo, yeah, teachers. So the teacher will teach material and the students learn. When the teacher comes to the end of the unit, students are able to choose if they're ready to try the test or if they need more time. Once the student passes the test at the minimum mastery level, which is a level set by the teacher, and I recommend 75% personally, the student then moves on to the next level. In this way, students naturally sort themselves into ability groups because those who learn faster pass the test faster and achieve higher levels faster. Students who need more time are allowed to take more time and if they don't achieve the minimum mastery level, they go review and study the material and they try again when they're ready. So each student is able to level up when they're ready at their own pace. This allows teachers to work with groups of students 
and those students have the goal of moving on to the next level, so they're motivated to learn the material. So, let's imagine that you're the teacher in a Mastery Gamified classroom, and you currently have students in three different groups based on how many tests they passed. Now, in your 30-minute class, instead of just having one to three minutes per student, you can have 10 minutes with each group of students who are put in their ability levels themselves. And you could probably choose how you spend those 10 minutes. Maybe you need less time with the advanced group. Maybe they just need five minutes, a little reminder, a little direction. Here's the part in the book, go learn it. Aren't those students easy to teach? And then maybe you spend a little bit more time with the low group. I love this group, the group that tries hard, but sometimes they just need a little extra help. A lot of times they need help with study skills. So the teacher can use part of the class time to teach content and teach study skills to this group. And then the kids in the middle, you find something in the middle, <laughs> somewhere between less time and more time. So, if you're a teacher like me who loves the idea of a personalized learning curriculum for each student, but you have no idea how to do it, hopefully you got some ideas from my experience. This is the only system that I've ever found that actually differentiates the way students need and in a way that meets every student's need. If you want to further engage in helping your students by increasing academic expectations and engaging students in your classroom, all while differentiating. I hope that these notes help you. If you're interested in using the mastery gamification methodology in your classroom, don't worry. Just, you know, start one step at a time. It's a big thing, but don't worry. It's okay. One step at a time. I'd also love to guide you through the process so you can avoid the mistakes I made when I was first mastery gamifying my classroom. So if you'd like some support on this journey, send me an email at stephanie at seagrowstrategies.com and join my Facebook group. And hopefully I'll see you there soon. Now, it is time to see what's going on in a Mastery Gamified classroom. So, this week is insane, y'all. Completely crazy. So, big news, I'm going to McCall this week, the um, computer conference for teachers in Michigan and I get to present on the Mastery Gamification methodology. So if you're going to be at my call, shout out, and I'll see you there. Come see my session. And while I'm doing that, preparing for my presentation, I'm also working on gamifying my Spanish 2. So we are in our second gamified unit in Spanish 2, and the boss of this unit is Wrath. So remember, we're going through the seven deadly sins there, and Wrath is the one that's taking over. And I got to make some very fun characters this week. That's one of the parts I love about Mastery Gamification and the gaming narrative, making characters. So I made this little minion of wrath. It's called a Fury, and it's this little flame, and it's really actually more cute than anything. But he's made out of fire, and he's ready to burn stuff up, and he's all throwing his fit. But see, this one represents the mini boss battle that my students will have to do. So this is an easy test before the big one, where in my Spanish class, they just have to identify vocabulary. So they'll see a Spanish word, and they have to give me the English word. It's like multiple choice, matching, that kind of setup. You know, the easy test. So there's a little fury, this little tiny minion of wrath. Basically, you can just stomp on him and he'll go out. So that one's supposed to be the easy mini boss battle. Now, for this coming week, my students are going to have a little bit harder boss battle, still a mini boss battle. They haven't gotten to Wrath yet, but they're going to have to fight the person who Wrath is possessing in order to exercise Wrath out of this historical person. So in order to do that, it's going to be a little bit harder of a test in which it's going to be the other way around. So this time they're going to see an English word and they have to provide the Spanish. So you see how the levels go? We just leveled up, we start a little easy, go in the middle, and then finally the third week they're gonna have their big boss battle where they're gonna have all the questions, the reading, writing, speaking, listening, all of that knowledge they've learned applied in sentences and paragraphs. So it's a change for my Spanish two students, but a lot of students are really thriving and they're learning 
so much Spanish. I don't feel like I'm wasting my time. I don't feel like I'm wasting their time. I feel like we're having fun and it's a challenge and they're learning and they're using the language and I see them writing their sentences and I see them speaking and it's a beautiful thing, y'all. It's a lot of work, especially when you're Polishing up Spanish 1 Mastery Gamification, creating the Spanish 2 Mastery Gamification, and getting ready to present at McCall this week. But by next year, check in with me, and I feel like there will be a lot less stuff I have to do. Because all the stuff will be prepared this year, and I'll just be ready to go and use it next year. That's the hope, right? Alright, and then it is time for our final section today, the Call of the Quest. Only for those bold enough and brave enough to try. Your master teacher quest is here. So your challenge for this week is to figure out how you can differentiate in your classroom. Is there a way that you could set up a filter, a standard, a series of boss battles, something like that, where your students can pass or not pass, take their time with it, and naturally sort themselves into groups. You'll be amazed at how nice it is to be able to teach to one ability group at a time and be able to customize your teaching for what your students need in that moment. So, I challenge you, give it a try. All right. Hey, thanks so much for tuning into Classroom Quest K-12. If you're heading to McCall, look me up. I'll see you there. Can't wait to see you. And have a wonderful week. See you next time. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Classroom Quest K-12, and I hope it inspires you to level up the learning in your classroom. If you like what you heard, please subscribe and leave me a rating and review wherever you listen. It really helps me out. And if you want to schedule a meeting with me to see how we can customize the Mastery Gamification methodology to your grade and curriculum, find me at my Facebook, Instagram, or my website at seagrowstrategies.com. I'd love to help you level up your classroom and help you turn your students into classroom heroes. Thanks again for listening. I'll see you next time.